All right, Kia ora everybody, and welcome to this Maybe a, a subscriber webinar. Welcome to everyone who's still just joining. So we're just going to basically run through the topic of human plus AI tools between us. So it's, it's myself and Sam Ragnarsson. All right. So we've got a one hour agenda here at the end of Friday here in Aotearoa. And thanks to everyone that's logging on from other time zones, especially some, some of the UK. So welcome if it's like two and three in the morning where you are. So Sam and I are going to basically run through an hour agenda here. So we'll just do a quick intro here for five minutes. We're going to speak for 10 minutes on Roam Research, which is a tool that we use. Both of us use quite a lot and just really find it quite empowering. So a few tips and tricks that, that we've learned on that. Jump into some of the large langu language model tools. So ChatGPT and you know we've been seeing some of the stuff coming through from Microsoft Bing recently and then jump into AI drawing tools so you'll notice that we've both got backgrounds my background here is a hillside with geodesic domes with New Zealand bush and a blue sky and so this is where I say Sam this is where I'd like to live sometime and Sam just said I'd be bored and go through these drawing tools Sam's got some real gems to share there and then some of the more out there stuff that we've been seeing as well and look at any time do jump into and ask a question as we go and we'll, we'll see what we can do all right well let's just this is by the way what we're looking at here is is Rome research and so this is a nice joint hive mind a tool that Sam might talk about in a moment and so you know we we a lot of our collaboration that, that we do together we use this graph here and it's yeah so so we've sort of stripped down a little bit but you can see that the graph sort of gets you know sort of knocked down into a shape and then you can see all the pages laid out like that as well and just jump in so and then today we're going we're doing this webinar all right so intro to introduce myself. So hi, I'm Ben. I, I, uh, hi, Ben. Hi. <laughs> so, hi. <laughs> I, I, I write the Mimi web newsletter and hopefully everyone knows me. And yeah, how did this come about? So Sam and I were just chatting. Uh, we sort of catch up together quite regularly and uh, we're just chatting about some of the AI tools we're using. And then we went down a rabbit hole and about you know an hour and a half later, we came up and went, oh, we should probably share this because this is, uh, you know, I've learned a lot. And this is the first time we've done a Zoom webinar. So we're winging it. And so please bear with us and any gremlins we'll try and sort out. And we'll put a recording of this up and also the, this graph entries here, I'll put into the Mimeo subscriber graph as well. All right, Sam, introduce yourself. Oh, thank you. Hi, everybody. Yeah, we are definitely winging it, so uh, very professional when we come to webinars. My name is Sam Ragnarsson. I My background is, is varied, and I could probably spend a good hour on it. But uh, in short, I'm originally Icelandic, so my well, weird humor and sort of directness can be traced all the way back to Vikings. And, you know, you probably just have to get used to it. Mean well, but for the last sort of 30 years, I've been globe trotting around the world, worked in, in UK and Germany, Australia, Japan, China, uh, USA, and now in New Zealand for 10 years and probably will last here. I think there was all of them. Always in sort of process improvements, project management, or various sort of entrepreneurial activities. S started and then run into the ground several companies and, and all of that. But probably since I came here, beside my entrepreneurial part, I've been concentrating on uh, being a consultant, I guess, and being in various places, often in, in council and stuff. And in the last two years, I really got into the space of, of being uh, in central government, doing a sort of data alignment and, and, and such things. Mm -hmm. So I think I will let that do and, and, and move yeah. on. And they yeah. can't just ask. And Sam's very modest. So one of the most innovative people I, I know and I've worked with. And yeah, he is very direct. But and I think you probably understate a lot of the value you're creating at the moment, just working across you know the combined environmental and agri primary industry space at the moment in Aotearoa, you know, sorting out some of the data sharing issues across there. So yeah, quite look quite look forward to maybe spending another session and we can talk a little bit more about that. Better, yes. Thank you. Hive mind. I'm just going to quickly, I came up with this term hive mind. You obviously didn't come up with the original one, but the way I'm using it is that hive mind are people that are coming together to share willingly what they are discovering out there and what they're working on to the appropriate level, obviously. And as doing so, they will grow and, and you know, become bigger as a, as a unit. And uh, I got so tired of having coffee cup or coffee cut shop or or beer after work or whatever and i decided to have something that that was a little bit more purposeful and that's sort of where the hive mind comes from and that has sort of permutated into various aspects as you can see there maybe you'll share a template in a moment um 
and uh, yeah just <laughs> catching up for beer is something that neither of us can do anymore because we're, we're both off the source since uh, the beginning of the year right oh since just a month ago for me right here we go right rome research so we are looking at rome research on the screen and this is a page that i put together and so what is rome research well um it's like Fight Club. You're not allowed to talk about Fight Club, so we're not allowed to talk about Rome Research. It is a superpower, I, I would describe it as. It is a way of you as a user to basically take everything you've been thinking about and to externalize it. So it's like an exocortex of your brain. So I've been using it for over two years now, and pretty much, you know, increasingly, anything that's gone through my brain, you know, and I, I process a lot of data and patterns every day, is, is sort of logged at a very high into Rome. So I can come back and I can search and I can find connections between it. Basically, underlying the whole system is this graph database structure and very, very, very quick demo. It, you're able to basically create pages as you go. So, you know, today we're talking about, and then you open, use a square bracket notation, generative AI. Yep, and then we go there, and I can go to generative AI, and there's a new page. And so examples of gener of examples here are sort of like GPT three and Bing, uh, and you know some of the others we look at Synthesia, one we might look at later on. And then I think yeah, I can just click here. Yeah, and then I, but then you can basically, you can see here that this is linked back to my daily page here. So yeah, this is linked back to the page and then you've got, so there's all these backlinks throughout the whole thing. Not, so, you know, how do we, how do we use it? Just talk through a couple of examples here. So this is a screenshot of my daily graph. I don't know if you can see that. There's like thousands of pages there now. I was like about two, two years of daily notes and then I just mix my personal work information together because, you know, that's sort of how it is in the brain. And, you know, just as a productivity tool, I just can get memory recall across pretty much anything in here just with a simple search here. So, you know, look at Sam here and, you know, there's a, a bunch of the stuff that, you know, we've talked about and we've created this gra graph. Yeah, uh, the one thing I wanted to just, so it's not just a static note-taking app i mean you know base level that's what it is but it is also scriptable so there's the smart blocks is a a tool that that's able to come so it's probably a little bit overkill so you know i am a rome geek and you know i do use this a lot but i've got a daily template so if i just go xx like that then i can pick my daily template that i've created and I actually tell you what i'll just go and look at that so templates here so there's a page in here and this is my daily routine right and so it's sort of pseudocode that you can go through. And then I, you know, I just keep a journal, you know, bullet points of what I've been doing during the day. Sam thinks it's really geeky. I basically just upload my sort of sleep metrics and from Whoop, I use Whoop wristband. Interestingly, if anyone uses an Aura ring, there's actually a plugin here that just automatically imports it. Weekly, I'll do a blood pressure test. I, yeah. And then basically keep, keep a track on diet, alcohol consumption, coffee consumption, no more uh, alcohol from here on. A little bit of planning for the day. And then it basically, there's a to-do workflow here within the system. So you can basically just pull up your list of stuff that's out of date and overdue and what's coming up. I like the serendipity random block thing here is that you can just pull a random snippet from, you know, any time in the last two years. And then, you know, sometimes that sort of refreshes a train of thought that might've got lost. I try to be quite disciplined and put a, you know, just do a little bit of, trying to recall the memory from, from life and then yeah bring them from a google calendar if it's a sunday i'll sit down and plan my weekly agenda and then just do stuff on client work and so on so let's just see that in action very quickly in the morning i will just grab my morning coffee and i'll just go xx daily and that script goes and executes and and then yeah and it's much faster than my graph because there's not so much in there and so you basically get all of that there ready to fill in. And you can see here, there's the overdue to do list. All right. So maybe we'll do another session on Rhyme, but I find that there's a really efficient, you know, daily rhythm there just to get all of my data out. So just, for example, this is just this, the hours sleep in my personal graph here. I've got like 400 days worth of data, 401, you know, sleep. And you can see that, you know, I'm not doing too bad on the sleep, but, you know, newsletter night tends to be a bit challenged. That's from my personal graph there. So, you know, it builds up this archive of data that, you know, that you can query later on. All right. So that's a little bit. Oh, yeah. And then just, I just have like annual and monthly and weekly planning cadences as well, which 
you know, I, it still I'm still getting to work, but it, I find that not a lot slips through the cracks anymore. So I'm much more efficient at making sure that stuff that you know I need to get done gets done. All right, Sam, you're going to demo your stuff. The only other thing I was going to demo was uh, Roam AI while we were on my screen, but it, <laughs> we were just both trying to get it to work, and somehow the API is gone. But yeah, so there's another. It's QQ, isn't it? Yeah. So what you're able, what you would be able to do is go to a. You know, so if I create a page, Roam AI demo. You can basically use GPT three in this case, but I'm at the Chat GPT API came out last week, and you know, top ten topics to do that, and then in theory, you get the ability to sort of complete that sentence to you know rephrase it, generate an image from it. There was advocate think completely out of the box around that, but unless we're going to be really lucky, that's not working today. So there's something wrong with the API keys. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing. In fact, no, Sam, I think you, you're just going to talk to this way. Yeah, to begin with, I just want to make clear that we are not getting paid by Rome Research yet. Yeah, I, there's some alternatives, Obsidian yes. and LogSec in particular. Yeah, so I've used LogSec a bit. And, you know, like you say, Brad, the advantage of Rome is it is online. And actually, they do have an encrypted storage capability now which is great but it does slow it down quite a bit when the graph gets very big and yeah logsec yeah. definitely is local only and it's very very buggy yeah but i think it doesn't really matter which tool i think these tools are now getting to a stage where they really allow you to go to the next level i remember when 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 ben showed me this tool and he is the he was the one who showed this to me two years ago almost and it was like it changed my life overnight I mean, I'm not even saying that lightly. Finally, I had found a tool that allowed me to, you know, park every single <laughs> thought I had, every single website that I came to and didn't want to lose or whatever. And I didn't get into this stressful thing of, of having to consume something on the spot necessarily, which is, you know, some for at least guys like me that go down in a rabbit hole on the internet or in conversation or researching something was, was an incredible freedom. And I think the second thing for me is that I have a terrible memory, you know, I'm very visual memory yeah. and I just, I can't remember people's name unless I've seen them in an email or if I've seen them or written them or done something. And, and it's sort of, I, I can imagine it's like maybe some dyslexic people feel about something. You know what I mean? It feels a little bit like you are, there is something you feel nervous because you mm. can't remember something or you, you, you met somebody. So really Rome has allowed me to capture meetings, people I meet. And then before I meet them again, if I'm not sure about anything, I can just bring it up. And, and, and just because of the visual thing, I start remembering the conversation and because I went through the act of recording it. So for me, that's just been absolutely amazing. It's my second brain. And, but I think another thing though, especially when you look at the uh, anal retentive crazy person as Ben with his graphs there, you know, don't think that to use something like this, you yeah. have to be using it to that level and not, and I had to tell myself because I'm a little bit all or nothing kind of guy, as, as some people know, which is why I don't drink at all now. <laughs> <laughs> My wife said, I just have one beer a week. No, no, no. <laughs> all or nothing. And so basically I had to convince me and, and get myself on the track that when you're using a tool like that, you can totally fail. You can not do anything, not record anything for three days and the world hasn't actually burned because everything I put in there at least is of some value to me. So that would be, you know, what I would say. I can share if you like some of yeah, my I'll templates. Stop sharing or, you, yeah, maybe if you just, want. we were a little bit over time already, but I think it's probably worth I'll just show quickly two of so my just, templates to just yeah. show that there is other ways. Do I do that? Screen sharing uh, working in the webinar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's Zoom, which nobody should use. I, mean, I think it's this one. Gotcha. He's that good looking black. Yeah, exactly. So for me, I organized my my whole Rome basically around various projects. So I have have all project work every as work numbers. I have all of the different sort of things that I do quite a lot of and put them in, in shortcuts here. And one of the ones that goes mostly to is 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 my pages, which is basically just a list of of things that are about my life that I need to capture you know, whether it's my health or whatever. And I love this one, my Sam drawers, which I can't open because there is so much stuff in it. But basically in there, I have everything, you know, that I need to know, you know, the, the cable, you know, <laughs> is in that drawer. The uh, When I buy any equipment or anything, 
the the receipt and the picture and the guidebook goes into the drawer and I can throw everything else away. It's there. It's absolutely wonderful, you know. And I use it then as well, you know. If you look at this one here, for example, if I close this, open this every day, I open a thing like this one here, which basically works very similar to smart blocks, but I haven't gone that far. Which basically I double dot like this and I pick one of my templates, which is very easily can create. And just and then it populates it like that. And in mine, I have what I'm actually going to do personally that day, what I schedule or date that day, and then I have a detail for bigger meetings with with various things that is quite good to capture, and reminders and so on and so forth. And then I also have if I'm I'm, I'm have any people that I meet and I want to capture something about and learn about them, I basically have an address book that I've created to my to fit my way of thinking with a reminder to touch base I, with them. I mean, so it on. really is, it's a personal CRM yeah. Yeah. straight away, but like you've got, I've borrowed a bunch of your templates around, you know, your profiles, and then you've got this uh, meeting template, which is just fantastic where, you know, and you know, when you sit down for a meeting with Sam, it's very purposeful. And you know that basically by the end of it, there will be notes taken and actions taken away so oh, yeah. be careful i don't want people <laughs> to be nervous <laughs> <laughs> but it's really but it's efficient yeah. and we get there in 20 minutes right um, yes yeah yeah and we can also pick up so when me and ben we often look at the notes from the last meeting we were on and and so because we have captured it i find it best there's links and stuff so ben might say to me hey you need to read this book you know mm -hmm. and then when i review that i put in a link to the book in my graph yeah. And it becomes something instead of just being talk that didn't go anywhere. But yeah, let's go to AI. So are we will. I was just going to say the one last thing I was just going to demo on. Right. So one of the things that I do for subscribers is the Mimi subscriber round graph. So you, when it arrives, it's getting quite big now. And so hopefully a few of you have been in here as well. And so this has basically got every newsletter that I've written over the last three and a half years or three and a bit years. Um, and so if you go to, you know, the shortcuts are down the side here. So you know, all newsletters here, group by year. And so, you know, you can go and see all of 2021, 2021s. We had a bunch of, yeah, maybe on Sundays at the beginning of last year. And then I went and started writing the book. And so what this has done is that, you know, I can just basically search for anything that I've written. So I'm finding this now increasingly useful for me to go back and check something I've written years ago. And, you know, and Sam was, you were mentioning the other day, I'm always going, and you know, I spoke about this in, in you know, 2020, 22 or something. And this is, you know, what where I find it. I was talking about the moon earlier and I've created a, just created a page called the moon. And then I've basically written about the moon 36 times since I started Mimia and everything's back there. So it's not, it's by no means perfect. This the way that it embeds tweets isn't always perfect. So what I generally will do is I'll actually go to the newsletter itself and then it, you can find it there and then go to the top and it's basically got published date and a link to the actual page on Substack. Um, and then you can sort of go and see it as it was originally presented. Can it's I just the, say, Ben, the, the, the linkage here, I think, and why we're presenting this Rome is actually, at least in my view, soon we will have AI that can crawl through our own Wrong yeah. graph, both Ben and I, because we've been using it for such a long time mm -hmm. in, in, in modern time, <laughs> two yeah. or three years. And the value that I would get from an AI crawling through my mind would probably be enormous if, as mm -hmm. long as it would be secure and all of that. I think in the future, we will maybe even have something like Rome Research automatically when we will have our own AI that will just be appointed to us, right? We won't have to necessarily do as much work as we, me and Ben are putting into it. I don't know. I suspect that, you know, Substack will add that capability into the platform itself as well right now there's a degree of manual curation of the links the backlinks and so on but that will just become more and more automatic and yeah no absolutely and uh, look i'm really enjoying i'm really looking forward when my whole twitter feed you know everything i've ever tweeted everything i've ever liked on twitter or, or any of the other social media platforms that i'm on anything i've ever written google docs every email i've ever sent this is the user interface into that and so your entire digital life you can just navigate around it initially through this text-based interface, but there'll be visual interfaces as well. Yeah. All right, look, we're way over time already. Um, as Sam said, if you are 
looking for a single place to put all of your knowledge, this is the tool that, that's really worked for us. So we'll, I'll, we'll take all of the notes, this page that we're looking at now and put it into the Menio graph as we go. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Right. I was going to just talk a little bit about ChatGPT. And I think everybody probably by being here is going to be aware of, will have used ChatGPT itself. I wonder if I just bring one up. So Sam, you've paid for a subscription now. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. If I could, there was some issue with it actually. All right. So this is the standard chat GPT inter interface. So what do I what do I use it for? I use it a lot for initial research prompting. So, you know, sort of top 10 topics on human plus AI. And it basically just comes back straight away with a really useful list. And then you can sort of basically sit, ask it to then expand on item three and It'll just basically answer you a bunch of questions. And this is obviously based on training across the entire body of human knowledge. And then they added the stock generating dynamic. It's like, yeah, okay, enough already. It's fascinating, you know, as a new user interface. And so Microsoft have taken, as far as we understand, about 49% of OpenAI, the company that's put it out. And Microsoft are basically, you know, pushing it out as part of Bing now with a view to going up against Google for a search. The challenge we've got with this is that it, it is quite hallucinatory. And so... You can ask it to basically a question and it can't, you know, find the answer or isn't quite sure about the answer. It'll write something with this extremely confident voice that is actually not true. In fact, I saw an exchange from a academic the other day where someone had contact, emailed him and said, I wonder if you could send me a copy of this paper that you have that, that you wrote entitled, you know, some, something obscure. Because I never wrote that paper. He goes, oh, I should probably stop using ChatGPT to do my research. Just one example. In terms of using it for as a writing tool, again, it's got a factual and considered voice. I, I have used it in places. It, it, it tend, doesn't certainly doesn't feel like an authentic voice with me. So was, again, train it on three and a half years worth of Mimi newsletters. It will probably, you know, be indistinguishable. You get it to code, to write code. I'll show you a little example. And look, the other, so the other things that are in there and whether it's OpenAI, whether it's ChatGPT underneath it or, you know, some of the other models out there, Google, Meta with Llama, they've all re released a bunch. Um, yeah, it's quite a step up for using a mind map, John. Yeah, totally. Going back to Rome. So yeah, one of the things I just wanted to show you, which is pretty mind-blowing, is some the way that it'll summarize text. And so if I just take a, I should have, sorry, I should have pre-prepared -pre something. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do it the other way around. So Matt, you're on the call. I just did this earlier. So me and Matt did a podcast quite a while ago now. And then I went to summarize.tech and I said, here's the, here's the YouTube URL. Just summarize it. Click a button. Literally 10 seconds later, it comes back with every five minute of the podcast. It's like that, which is which is incredible, right? So what I, I might try and do is then take that whole section here. And let's see if I can break chapter chat GPT. Please summarize the whole text. Paste. See if it There you go. There you are. So as a tool to basically compress large amounts of text down, then it's it's pretty good at pulling out the salient points. So other use cases I've seen is catching up on a Twitter feed, a Slack channel overnight. If you dip out, dip in, you said the most important things. So yeah, there's all sorts of things you can imagine. There's lots of hackathons going out there. Maybe if you've got some ideas as well, put them into the Q&A and we can maybe just discuss them during the Q&A at the end. All right. So just a couple of things, a couple of crazy examples. Ah, this is amazing. Some pleat. Chat GPT, what new puzzle game should I try if I enjoy Sudoku? And it gives you a list of the existing ones. But could you invent me a, a logic puzzle like, you know, similar to Sudoku that doesn't currently exist? Yes, it can. And it sort of creates this sum delete, which is like a seven by seven grid filled with random numbers. And it goes, all oh, right, well, can you please code a playable version of this using HTML and JavaScript? And it writes the code for it. And then it works, apparently. <laughs> and then 30 seconds later, it's like add CSS. And it does, does that. So, you know, as a productivity accelerator in certain use cases, it's going to be just mind-blowingly powerful compared to what was there before. I think there'll be a fair amount of error correction involved in, in that in these cases. Just another couple of things I've, I've enjoyed here is one where it's basically writing a legal brief for the rights of sentient AI. And then also here, it's basically suggesting research 
and then suggesting who, who are the experts in this field effectively who would be peer reviewing that research. So it's going to introduce lots of new security traps. Sam, you had an interesting use case that your daughter's been using it for. Yeah, actually, I'm going to name a few very brief, briefly, though. First, I was going to say that the the chat GPT, you know, has done wonders for my wife because, and I think that's actually what people are sometimes missing. It's, it's fine for, for people in profession like Ben and me and probably many on this call. You know, for us, it's like an, a little adventure to play with and maybe we can see some little bit of funny things to do with it and, and, and maybe some great things. But my wife, she is born in China and, and, you know, English is her third language and she's working in engineer company as a marketing specialist, right, or, or coordinator. Now, so imagine my Chinese wife with, you know, 50 and 60 year old engineers and, and factory workers here in Christchurch and she's trying to market them on a technology that she has no idea about really. Since she got this tool, she has been able to basically explore every topic she needs to do and become an expert within a few minutes because she can talk to somebody and what's even more, she can actually talk to them, talk to the Japanese in Chinese. So she can actually understand the subject even more as he's getting the English version of what he wants to say. So she is not taking just something and copying it and pasting it. And that's what people, I think, are misunderstanding. Nobody, I don't think anybody does that. It's actually just a helping tool. Like you open a book in a library and you look at it and you read it and then you get the essence of it and you put it somewhere. Chat GPT for me is the same way. You have to validate it and, you know, know that that you know, there is no guarantees, you know, yeah, I can talk to Ben and Ben can tell me all sorts of bullshit, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, that he is any less great guy. You see, you know, like you're guy. actually talking to an AI right now. This is, yeah, this yeah. Is like... <laughs> okay. Now, the other thing that more fun though, was that my daughters took to it out, like, you know, pistol water or whatever you say, Dr. Water, what, what, what do you say? And, oh. uh, and for them, it's, there was nothing weird about it to have chat with PPT. And they both started talking to, to it and even you know one of my when when i didn't know something now they would say like like ask the chat gpt can we talk to it and one of them actually wrote a love letter with the chat gpt because she was felt she was taking so long to write it so she got help so i mean i would never have even thought that's possible but that's mm -hmm. that's that's where we are you know it's amazing if, you, if anyone's read neil stevenson's the diamond age and this is the young lady's primer Basically, it is a book that contains all knowledge that you can just query and, and talk to. Right, Sam, I'm going to drop off. We're way behind, but can you just talk, talk us through AI drawing tools? Yes, I can. So uh, I, I'm i enjoying myself so much these days. I've been going around. Finally, just as Rome research seemed to be catching off with my own brain, the art in the AI is finally catching off, and I can now visualize and do what I want to do through tools that I could never do before. <clears throat> and I'm just going to show you a few examples. So, I mean, you probably all have now seen the, uh, the wonderful pictures that Ben discovered of himself, where you've got profile picture.ai, where you basically upload X amount of pictures of yourself. I think it's about 20. And then you decide how many different version you want. I think there's about a hundred available. The uh, one top right is just so disturbing. Yeah. yeah. So, and then it basically generates this. This is the best thing I've seen. I've seen many of these kind of tools. Also the value for money is, is amazing based on other tools. So I, I did it as well. And I'm going to do it again, actually, with better pictures and, and do the whole thing rather than just 35. But, uh, you know, this might just be fun. But I felt it was like, well, if I was an actor, you know, I'm not Tom Cruise, but, you know, if, if I was an actor and I would have people pay to make me look cool, some of these pictures I might get pretty close to. Others, not so much. And, yeah, it's great fun. I would say, and it, it, I felt it very liberating to be able to see yourself so easily in so many forms. You know, it gives you just a bit of an ego boost, I think, but maybe just for me. <laughs> now, there is the various photos that you can generate. You can go into tools and basically give them a prompt, almost like you do in the chat GPT. You just write what you actually want to create. And it just goes away and, and creates it. Some of these are paid tools. Some of these are, are free tools up to a limit. and just to give you an example before I show you something, here is the same prompt given to a few tools. 
And as you can see, you know, there is various different outcomes that come from the different tools. This is all from the same tool with the same prompt. And as you can see, it is quite distinctive, even though it has the same prompt. So sometimes you do it again and again to get the picture you want. Here we have another tool that creates background like wallpaper in high resolution. And, and which is probably one of my favorite tool now because it's just extraordinary picture it generates. And there's another one, as you can see, it's very similar that came out of it because this one I had to take, I had to take basically one of these photos and put it into the other one. So you can take one photo, put it into another AI and say, hey, generate me something similar to this because this one didn't take a prompt. And Dali with the same prompt, this might be interesting to many, you know, same text that generated this picture in the background generated these pictures in DALI. And as you can see, it's very, very different outcome. So which means that depending on which tool you're in, you most likely have to tailor make your prompts. You know, what is a realism in one tool might not be the same thing in another one. Photorealistic is something, or 3D render and game rendering and prototyping. So just think of that, right? And you can I, really go for it yeah, there. As just to demonstrate it, you're going to be able to go down to domain-specific generative models and say, you know, that's just a prompt I put into Stability AI, design a new national museum for New Zealand, five stories high on the Auckland waterfront in the style of Zaha Hadid. And then it does that, and you can sort of pick one of those, and then you could basically say, now generate me five BIM models for this architectural plan in a budget range of 40 to 70 million or whatever, it'd probably be an order of magnitude more than that. And so I think what's really closely now for domain specific generative AI coming through. So here is a tool. So hopefully it will run through quickly. Usually it's quite, quite quick. I'll, I'll actually go and start other stuff in the meantime. So it's the downside of a live demo, right? <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. I, I see Justin's on the call. I mean, Justin just saw that avocado chair when we ran AI Day oh, three years ago. And I remember that coming up on the screen and, and everyone sort of like going, oh, well, that's quite interesting. But, you know, what would you use it for? And now in just two, three years, how far it's come on. Actually, I see Ronan and Jaya as well on the call. You know, I think you actually introduced me to AI art back in 2017, I think. Sl slug puppies. There's something you can Google when you're not on a work computer. So. <laughs> so I'm just quickly putting in here. I think that this link you will be able to share, Ben. This link, I think, is saved. Yeah. So now I have generated some New Zealand landscape I said with spaceships, right? And uh, then I go into my DALI and uh, basically pick the same one that I just did, if I can find it now. Where did I put it? That's always my AI. So here you have it, and I might decide, well, I want to expand to the right. What's in, what's in the mountains to the right? Well, I can't do that yet, oh, yeah, Mr. Yeah. because then it will go haywire and it will be a bad demo. There are a few tricks and things, but let's see, just we say New Zealand future landscape. Do something similar, space ships. Let's see what it does. So... It's not infallible, and obviously it's a live demo, so it's probably bound to. Well, look at that! Isn't that beautiful. I so, want to see a mo. I want to see a mower in the foreground, Sam. A what? A mower. A mower. Okay. An M O A. Yes. A mower. Yeah. So maybe just on the bottom right there, where there's those that right in the foreground. Yeah, so I'm, supp I'm supposed to be able to basically now go and do an eraser. Yeah. I'm actually going to download this first and then take an eraser yeah. and do like this here. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. And what do you say? MOA. Uh, yeah, a MOA. M-O-A. M-O-A. Yeah. And that's it? Yeah. All right. Now, this while that is, is works. we haven't rehearsed this. <laughs> no, no. 
Yeah. But As here's, an, before, here's yeah. an example that I did before, <laughs> but where I basically have built it up with various steps like you're seeing there, and then actually t taking it through other programs as well to, to enhance it and, and, and really in, in many ways creating art. And here is one that my daughter made. So she created a middle bit by Dali program. And then she went through each square and said, now I want to see more roses. Now I want to see mountain. Now I want to see rabbit. Now I want to see fox. Now I want to see, you know, and she built this artwork, you know. So it's just, just an ordinary. It doesn't seem that it liked your it doesn't like what a mower cryptic. Is. Gosh. No, oh, well. it doesn't like that. No. So yeah. that's, that's it. And if I go back to the... This one here, as I say, just answer a question if anything. There is so many other tools. I mean, here is a, 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 a tool that you can basically create a 3D world out of the same thing. You prompt it and you have a whole basically panorama in a 3D <laughs> way that you can zoom in and out of. And again, you can just write what you want and create it and then download it. I took my house and I wanted to see what I could do with it in another software. And I took a picture of my backyard just because I had it in my phone. And I said, I want to modernize it. And it just spewed these out to give me an idea. You know, it's just amazing. Similarly, I just said, I want a cabin in the woods and gave it almost no information. And it brought all of these beautiful things out here. I took my living room and I said, oh, I want to modernize that as well. So while I don't want you to see the crap in my living room very much, then, you know, as you can see, just by a single picture, it still could sort of figure out where things were. And, uh, you know, and I could just carry on and on. There is, there is endless, endless things. It really yeah. is. You know, you could, you could basically spend a lot of time going in there. So I say we'll share this page up into the Mimi. And, and, and we haven't even yeah. touched on, and I, and I haven't even researched very much the video generation yeah. the music one. Well, one look, but one I've thing looked I was... at the writing one a bit, but I'm not going to yeah. talk about that one today. I, I'll tell you what, are you, you're not sharing your sound, are you? If you unshare, I'll just do one and then we'll go to Q&A. Yeah, very few visual references from Moa on the internet. I think you're absolutely right there, Joe. It's, yeah. it's, it's so typical of you, Ben. It's yeah. go down a rabbit hole. <laughs> okay. Right. Just share share my sound on screen too. There. So my friend Chris Tagon has actually been building videos using this, uh, you know, for training. And we're just going to try and get a little live intro to the podcast playing from here. So. Hey, I'm Anna, and here's a it, quick so? Synthesia product demo. Start by selecting an AI avatar. Like me. Or me. Or me. Then type in text in over 65 languages. And choose a narration style or local accent. When you're ready, add your text, shapes, and other design elements. Choose a font or upload your own. You can also upload other brand assets, such as your logo, which you will find here for any future videos. Position everything easily thanks to the snapping function. If you need, you can also add a soundtrack. Next, start adding and styling visual elements. You can upload your own images and videos or select from our free media library with over 1 million assets. So you get the picture? Just go and have a play with that. It's the new PowerPoint. If anyone's got some questions, please type them in and we'll attempt to go deep into those. Otherwise, we'll just chat around. Shane, yeah, companies like Soul Machines. Well, yeah, I think basically what you're seeing there is the future of that being $15, $20 a month, just there and then. And the human face modeling that they've done um, has certainly been superseded that I've seen by some of these new avatar technologies coming out. Is there a burgeoning industry of chat GPT consultants? What do you reckon, Sam? No, not chat GPT, but I do think there is going to be quite a demand in the future for for understanding how to utilize AI technology in a, in a way that is is meaningful. You know, it's, it's just one of these hypes, obviously, that is going on now. And there is a lot of riffraffs in the field already when you start digging. And yes, I do think there is going to be ways to apply AIs in the future. And there will be some specialist knowledge on that until maybe AI takes over and then it's not needed. That's the answer. Yeah. Yeah. AI I taking guess. over those. We, we haven't gone down that down that rabbit hole. Just writing about it today um, uh, in the Mind Expanding Post, just about the AI safety, AI doomerism that's, that's basically come right to the fore now. I mean, a lot of us in the industry have sort of seen this technology being developed for quite a long time and sort of able to extrapolate out. 
But I think when ChatGPT finally arrived and people woke up to the fact that, oh, it's like talking to a human, it's sort of crossed over into the mainstream. Just on that subject, this just literally came out a couple of hours ago, but Microsoft Germany's CTO um, dropped a, a bomb. I think, you know, GPT-4 is basically the next model and that's what that should be out behind Bing next week. Question, does Rome store locally? Yeah, you can do both. So you can store on a local drive, on an air-gapped machine if you want, but then you obviously don't get the ability to share across devices or collaborate like Sam and I have been doing with that graph we just looked at. Rome do have completely encrypted storage now, which works fine, but I, having said that, my graph doesn't really perform too well on that, so it's a bit of a performance trade-off. I was wondering if I could answer or comment on Ronan's mm. question there. Ronan, you're asking how do you see AI supporting better human-to-human -human communication in the future? I think that's going to be the surprise, actually, to all of us, that AI is going to help people communicate, learn to communicate a lot better than today. And let me explain why I think that. So if you have an introvert, for example, that doesn't really communicate a lot, currently they might be in, in various, maybe games or maybe other internets or watching YouTube or whatever it is. But with the upcoming AIs, they will be actually communicating. They will actually be practicing the skills of talking to somebody, even though it's an AI. So I think there is going to be a lot of training and a lot of sort of just natural rhythm to to for people to be able to, you know, learn to communicate a little bit better because they actually are doing it instead of people maybe being home alone and or or being, you know, not really big on communication. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, Ben? Look, I think it's. As witnessed by the Synthesia demo just now, we are like months away from Uncanny Valley when we're on a call like this and we have no idea if the entity on the other end is biological or not. And GPT-4 apparently is going to be multimodal. And so like you were just showing, you generate a 3D scene, generate a video, generate an audio. There was that clip of the DJ who basically created a m m type voice and they uh, and you know rolled it into a song you know generating song lyrics and so on yeah so i think it's it's going to improve human and human communication yes but i think also humans may get drowned out a little bit i mean that's certainly my sense is that there's going to be this avalanche of seo optimized content that's going to flood the internet possibly break google just with its pure quantity and then that's <laughs> it's going to start training gpt5 and gpt6 and so you know, and as some commentary is like, you know, GPT-5 will be written by GPT-4 and trained on this entire generation of content, five orders of magnitude bigger than all human generated content that's ever been generated up until now. You've got something to share there, Sam. Yes, yes. I didn't do it with the, the other software, but this one was I tried and I did this video in about two minutes. Meme a webinar, Hive Mind with Sam Ragnarsson human and AI productivity tools. Join Ben and Sam for <laughs> demos and discussions of some of the latest AI tools and how they can be used to boost productivity and creativity. This webinar is on Friday the 10th of March 2023 at 4pm. There you go. Two minutes. <laughs> quality, quality item. Yeah, you know, sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, but I'm just... Just a few few weeks ago, putting something like this together would have taken at least a couple of hours. Ah, and and the imagery wouldn't have been free and all of that. Go on to Upwork and, and do it, yeah. So there's a really philosophical question to ask here is what is the role um, of biological humans in this AI rich future? And will the traditional economics that we know and love around capitalism? I mean, one of the interesting questions is who owns it and who controls it and so right now ability to train one of these large language models lives with maybe five to ten tech giants around the world well exclusively in the us and china basically and open ai and microsoft don't control access to all of their gpt models i know that i know that sort of meta's llama was open source and stability ai you know has been open sourcing stable diffusion and you know, so there's some other open source language models, but yeah, the, the quantity of GPUs required to train these goes into the hundreds of thousands, if not the millions for each training run to get the, the weights. So most of us on the call right in the far corner of the South Pacific, I know there's uh, some others are coming in from the other side of the world, but it does raise a question on 
sovereignty if basically all of the AI is owned and controlled by entities with shareholders somewhere else in the world or government agencies. So that's the other thing we're not talking about is, you know, how are intelligence agencies using this? There's a company called Primer who are providing this to US government and NATO to very rapidly summarize intelligence as it comes in and prioritize heuristic. And apparently that's what's been used as part of the Ukraine war. So yeah, it's a brave new world we're heading into. And look, I think we've pretty much come to the end of our hour. I hope people have enjoyed yeah. it then. And it'd be good to get feedback with, with thick skinned. Yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, maybe this is something um, that we could put on a little bit more regularly this time on a Friday to finish the week off. And there's plenty of content in the newsletter every week to run through. All right, we'll put a recording up and we'll put the, the pages that we've run through there into the subscriber graph. And yeah, anything else that you want to communicate, just email myself and Sam and have a fantastic weekend. All right. Cheers. Thank you, guys.